Okay, it looks like we're live. Hey, Carrie. Hey, Cheryl. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I am fabulous and I'm so excited to be hanging out with you today. You're one I of my too. favorite people to chat with. And we've uh, known each other now, I think, for seven years. It's been a long time. <laughs> I can't, I honestly can't believe it's been that long, to be honest. <laughs> we were both taking a similar coaching course or the same coaching course. And the coach said, there's this other lady and she's in the yarn business and you need to meet her. Yes. Did. <laughs> I know because we weren't even in the course at the same time. Like we were right uh, on, in like different batches or I don't know what you yeah. call it. And, um, and yeah, I got that same, like, you need to know each other. You guys need to talk. And um, it's funny how people come into your life, right? Like you never yeah. know how that's all going to play out. You know, I love that. And we only met for the first time in person last June. Yes. Isn't that yeah. crazy? It's only been nine months. It hasn't even been a year. I know. <laughs> I know. And I love that we got to do that. I love that we get to meet in person. Yeah. So that's, that's wonderful. So good. Yes. Well, so for anybody who doesn't know us, me or Carrie, um, do you want to do like a quick little introduction? Sure. Absolutely. Okay. So um, I'm Carrie Capone and I'm the founder of The Spinning Hand. And it's a yarn business that was founded in 2007. And today, what we mostly do is we sell knitting kits. So mm -hmm. I do have a subscription box. Every quarter, you get a different knitting project. And then um, I also sell yarn. And uh, just this year, just in just last month, um, I've started Knit and Crochet You from Zero to Sweater which is a course designed to help knitters and crocheters grow their sweater creation skills. Yay, I love that. I feel like that's such a perfect fit for you because one thing I've known about you since I think I first met you is that you're such a good teacher. You're such a good explainer of things. Thank you. And every time I hear you speak, I just I'm always so like in awe like I feel like when I, in my brain, right, I feel like it's like a daycare with like two and three year olds <laughs> screaming. Like that's what my thought process is like. And I, when I hear you talk, I feel like it's very calm and very like enjoyable to listen to. And I don't know, that's always something that struck me about you. So I was, when you told me about the course, I was so excited for you because I thought that's perfect. That's such a good thing. Thank fit for you. you. Well, I, I started out my career as a music teacher and I taught voice to adults and to children. And then I taught in public schools and I taught choir in general school Gosh. at general music and um, teaching like 25, 30 little ones at once is a lot. <laughs> I definitely prefer like one-on-ones, yeah. uh, small groups. And so when this whole interwebs thing started to take off, yeah. I was like, oh, I can do this, you know? Yes. It's, it's so nice. Without a barrier of distance, too. You know, yeah. it's so great about the internet, right? Yeah. Like we can reach people from all over the place, which has been the, one of my favorite things about owning a business is yeah. all the people I get to meet. So I love that from all over the world. It's so fun. Yeah. Um, so if you are joining us live, welcome. Uh, we love that you're here. Please leave a comment and say hello. Let us know who you are, where you're watching from. Um, if you are watching later on on the replay, just type replay in the comments so we can see you there. Um, really quick, I'm going to put a link in the comments. And it is because we're using a software called StreamYard to be live here with you. And we can pull your comment up on the screen and it will tell us who you are. It'll give us your name. But you have to give StreamYard permission to do that. Otherwise, it just says like Facebook user. So I posted a link if you want to give StreamYard permission. That way, if you leave a comment, we can pull you up and see your beautiful profile picture and say hello to you. So thank you for joining us. <sighs> well, also in the comments, if I may, if you have any questions um, about sweater knitting and your experience with knitting sweaters, um, 
Cheryl, I would love to hear the story about the sweater that you are wearing. Yes. Um, because as soon as we got on the call, I said, oh, that is stunning. I mean, the color work, it's just gorgeous. So, um, but then you had a little, a little tale to tell. Yes. Oh my goodness. So yes, I'm going to second, please do leave a comment and we will do a whole Q and A and answer them. If you have any questions about sweater knitting or whatever, just, you know, leave your comments and we will answer them. But the sweater I'm wearing, it's called the Goldwing sweater, and it is a pattern by Jennifer Steingast, and she is a wonderful designer of lots of gorgeous, gorgeous color work sweaters. And I believe this is my second color work sweater, but the first one that really had any decent amount, like the, the other one I did had just very, very little. So I was like, I'm going to make this sweater. I'd done color work before and I'd made sweaters before. So it's totally fine. Um, and so I knit this sweater and it was wonderful. It's in my hand dyed yarn. Love it. Um, it's a like cashmere silk and alpaca blend. It's mm. like fabulous yarn. However, I was telling Carrie that I only wear this sweater when I'm sitting down and doing like video or something like that, where you can only see me like right here because it doesn't fit me very well at all. And it took a long time to make. And, you know, even though it's my own hand dyed yarn, it's still, it's expensive yarn, <laughs> you know, even like for me to take it out of my own like inventory, it's still costly. And so it, it makes me really sad because I took, all of this yarn i spent all of this time and i have this like tightness that's kind of right here where the color work ends for some reason which i would think it would be more where the color work is but it's like right here and so it always feels a little uncomfortable and it's like kind of tight here up on my neck it like rides up and i don't know or and didn't know at the time especially like how to even do anything about that. Like I just, if I have a pattern, I just follow it. I just do, right. I just do what it tells me to do because I'm not a designer. I don't know. You know, I can do like a, my bust measurement and, and that's pretty much what I do. If it tells me to knit it a certain length, I knit it a certain length. The sweater is way too short. It's like a cropped sweater. And let me just tell you, I don't know. Some people look great in cropped sweaters, I am not that person. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> Today, I am not the one <laughs> to wear a crop sweater. I'm, I'm very short. I like to say I'm fun sized. I'm like literally <laughs> five foot tall. And um, my torso is very short. So you would think like, okay, if a sweater tells me I should knit it however long, like I, sh I should be fine. Like I'm a short person. I'll probably be long. But for whatever reason, maybe I did something wrong. I don't know. But it's sad. It makes me sad that I can only wear it like this <laughs> and not out in the world. <laughs> well, so now it's memorialized forever because you're wearing it in this video. Yes. Um, but I, I find this again and again that students will say, well, here's what the pattern says. And the pattern is written by a human being who has a certain either body shape of her own mm -hmm. or an idea of what the body shapes should be. So for you to say you did something wrong, that could be just as simple as that you have boobs. Right? Or that like, I'm a little bit wider of a person. <laughs> like, I'm not super skinny. So maybe no. I'm just taking up more space this way. Yeah. That yes. makes sense. A, lot, a lot of my students in KCU um, were big and tall. And, you know, so I would say the average size is 2X and it's just, it's different to, yeah. um, to design for um, us larger gals than for my husband who is modeling the sweater that I made, but he is like a clothes hanger, you know? Yes. Oh, and if you guys, if you're here and you got the email I sent out about KCU and you saw a very handsome gentleman in one of the images that is Carrie's husband. So uh, a new husband. So that's, congratulations. Somewhat new, right? It has yeah, that's why I'm still, I still blush. You know, we, we've only been married for seven months. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah. So it's second marriage for us yes. both. 
Yes. Um, so I was thinking about like my top tip for sweater knitting. Like mm -hmm. if I could just say, if, if you could just follow like one piece of advice, what would it be? Um, and at first I thought gauge, 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 mm -hmm. right? But that's only part of the puzzle. So in this sweater that Dan is wearing and, oh, I have it right here. While, Car while Carrie's pulling that out, if you guys have never knit a sweater, put it in the comments. Or if you have <laughs> knit a sweater, put it in the comments. Like, yes, I have, or no, I haven't. Yeah. So I don't know if you can see, I think you can see, but I had the gauge swatch is the inside of the pocket. Oh, I saw you in one of your lessons, I think on your website, it says that. And I thought that's brilliant. Yes. So that it can be, it can be wonky. It's inside, right? But you get some, you get some information. And like, it makes you knit a gauge swatch because we hate gauge swatches. I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've skipped it. And you use up your yarn that maybe you need that yardage or something. Like now it's actually part of the pattern. That's really yes, nice. yes, yes, yes. And if you, you know, again, it's it's the inside of the pocket. So if you wanted to use even a different color or something like that, you could. Yeah. So, so that is, you do get some information from a four inch gauge swatch or a six inch or whatever. Yeah. But then when I went to cast on the back of the sweater, even like a fraction of a stitch over four inches is only going to give you a little bit of information. Then when you have 20 inches and you have 40 inches, then those little fractions, they build up. And then suddenly you're swimming in a sweater or your sweater's too small. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Look at that adorable sweater though. <laughs> That's my problem. My sweater is too small. <laughs> so, um, so another thing that, that is sort of common wisdom that I would question just because it goes against like our human nature yeah. is to strip down to our undies and take measurements of every part of our body and write it down. Now, if you want to do that, fine. But honestly, I just don't want to know. I know I was going to say, mm, don't, please don't make me. <laughs> no, nope. I don't want to do it. It's embarrassing. I have a lot of shame. Um, I also don't want to know when I have gained inches or lost inches. What do I have to like do everything differently? Right. No. So my top tip is to find a garment that fits you perfectly. That is similar to the sweater that you are going to make mm -hmm. and to use that as your template. Oh, so that. the first uh, assignment before our kickoff class, which is um, a week from Thursday, Thursday night is the first class, um, is that everyone is going to have to go to the thrift store or their closet or something and find like, so we're making a V-neck cardigan. And it's Aran weight, which is like a medium weight. So mm -hmm. we'll use size seven needles, size eight, size nine, depending on your gauge, depending on how tightly you knit. So if you measured like, you know, those like really thin tissue weight cardigans, mm -hmm. they were yeah. especially popular like some years ago, right? If you use that as a sample, you're going to get the wrong gauge because it's too thin, okay. right? And so then your sweater is going to be too tight. If you used like one of those super bulky wool in the gang kind of like chunky, chunky sweaters, mm -hmm. then your sweater is going to be too big. So if you used a sweatshirt, like I don't even know if they make like V-neck cardigan sweatshirts, but even if you use something with the thickness of a sweatshirt, and you wear that sweatshirt and you're like, oh my gosh, this fits exactly right. Um, length is always easier to adjust than width, in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. So you can always add more rows. Right. Um, so like if you, if you found like something that was cropped, fine, we can add more length. But what I'm going to have everyone do 
is cut up the piece. So I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so don't do something that you've already knit. No, nothing precious. Um, but, but you know, go to the thrift store, try something on, or, you know, Walmart, something that's just kind of disposable. And, and then we're going to cut out the pieces and we're going to lay them out flat. And we're going to really see, like, what goes into making a garment. Oh, my what goodness. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is how they do it at uh, design schools. Oh, wow. Um, I don't know if they go to the thrift stores, but <laughs> um, for us regular folk, <laughs> right? we go to the thrift store. Um, so yeah. my son actually goes to FIT in New York, the Fashion Institute, and he doesn't do clothing. He does like shoes and handbags and belts and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but it's um, it's just very normal for students who don't have a lot of money to get things that have already been made for the fabric and for the cut and, you know, and just kind of copy what's already been designed. Right. Again again. So um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so I think that's amazing because I don't think anyone has ever showed me how a sweater, like what makes up, you know what I mean? Yeah. All the pieces and what, like, I know like, oh, this is the yoke, but I mean, I don't know what makes it, why is it a yoke? Like what, you know what I mean? Like yeah. all of those parts and pieces. And so yeah. in a way we kind of make our garments and we're doing it blind, right? Yes. We don't really yes, know, yes. we're just following what they say, this number of stitches, but we don't know why we're doing what we're doing. And I, you know, I, so what I was going to say is I like to think about um, like 125 years ago, Mm -hmm. um, sort of the little house on the prairie model where you go to the general store and you get your bolts of fabric and you have to make everything yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, so Laura Ingalls Wilder is problematic in many ways, but one of the things that she did that I thought was interesting was she made her wedding dress out of brown cashmere. Oh, wow. I thought, okay, like that's weird for us maybe, like, you know, a brown cashmere wedding dress, but still pretty cool. Yeah. So, um, it was just very normal for women to make their own clothing and store-bought was the exception. Mm. So they knew their own bodies and they knew what was going to look good or at least fit. <laughs> right? yeah. You know, it's in there. They would have had their moms to teach them. I I'm assuming, but like, you know, it's not like they would continue to make these pieces of clothing that just didn't fit. Right, right. They would know what worked for them, and then they could replicate it. So, um, that makes so much sense. So, what I really want my students to be able to do is look at a pattern, and say, "Oh, okay. Here's how I'm going to adapt it for myself." Now, that's later in the class. So, the the progression of the class is really the student is making their own pattern, right, with their own measurements. So, you know, when you're looking at your sweater pattern, it says cast on seventy parentheses, 74, 78, 82, brackets, 86, 90, 94. And you have to circle which one is yours. Yes. And then, right? The thing is with human bodies is that um, just because you're like 84 stitches in this part, you might not be that in another part because you might be taller. You might have a long torso like I do. Yeah. And a belly like I do, you know, or you might have boobs and, um, and, and you might be fun sized like me. You might be fun sized, right? You might be party sized. So, um, so this way, everyone is making the same sweater, but they they kind of plug in their own measurements as they go, and then at the end, they have their sweater pattern. So everyone has their their own sweater pattern. It's the same sweater, but Cheryl's is going to say these numbers and these numbers and these numbers. Mine is going to say these other numbers. That's like, it kind of just like blows yeah. my mind that that's even a possibility. And like, like I just want to be like, okay, like, let's do it. I want to do it right now. I know it's going to be kind of an adventure. And so listen, like this is the first time we're doing it. So it's, it's um, a bit of a risk because people don't know me, right? 
Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm so glad that you and I get to talk because you do know me. Yes. And we've done a few projects over the years together. So you know that I can be counted on to fulfill the promises. Absolutely. But the opportunity is that we really get to cater the class to you and you get a lot of individual attention. So right now we have nine students. That's yeah. a wonderful class size. Yes. You know, it's a really good class size. I'm capping it at 20. Um, we might not get 20 and that's fine. But what's going to happen is we're recording all of the sessions and then future classes will go through the course more or less on their own. I mean, we'll have like monthly Mm check-ins, but it's not going to be like this where I'm really guiding you through every step. Right. And you can never be behind because you're going to be able to go at the pace you need, but then you have these sessions where you can pop in. If you have questions, you can get them answered, but it's not like, oh my God, everybody's over here and I'm over here. And then you have this like weird pressure that you have to be doing it as fast as somebody else you, you, you can never be behind. And I love that. Yeah. And you do have lifetime access. I know we're kind of like jumping right into talking about the course instead of answering sweater questions. Um, and I will, I will get, I will get some new tips to you before we stop. Um, but I, I do think it's important to emphasize, like you said, there is no behind it's, um, it's lifetime access. So the course itself uh, for knitting, the knit sweater goes from the end of March to the beginning of June. Mm-hmm. But then you have lifetime access to all the videos and the updates. Yes. The crochet sweater for my crocheters out there, and I'm by crafty. I love both. Mm-hmm. Um, my good friend Verna is designing the crochet sweater as we speak. And that sweater course will take place in the fall. So when you sign up for KCU, you get access to both courses and there will be the live yeah the live aspect to that now we're having so much fun doing this that I want to do another sweater next year and I think it should be a top-down yoked sweater with color work because like if you cut one of those up that's a whole different ball game right because it's seamless yeah you know what we're doing this year is pieces so Mm -hmm. it really can be like broken down differently which um, I also think is great because if anyone is like me, I'm afraid of seaming. I don't do anything yeah. that I have to seam um, yeah. because I don't really get it. I don't, I just, it just seems very mysterious to me and I'm yeah. afraid I'm going to make these pieces and then I'm not going to know how to put them together correctly. Yeah. And so I think starting with something that is seamed and really teaching how and why in, in all of those things, because it's one nice. thing to like try to watch a YouTube video, but I know when I try to watch YouTube videos for knitting instructions, like sometimes it's great if it's just a quick little thing like, oh, you know, how do you, I don't know, pick up a stitch or something. But when it's more involved, I feel like I spend half my time just searching for a good video. And then by the time I find it, I'm tired. and I don't even want to try. I'm like, okay, that was the hour I had. And now I found it. So I'll like save it for later. And hopefully one day I'll go back to it. Um, But I want to take a quick look at the comments real fast and see, because we have a lot of people here saying that they either have made sweaters or haven't. So Mm -hmm. I find this interesting and I have questions. So Misty, hello. She says she's made two sweaters. So Misty, tell me, what did you, did you love it? Like, do you love sweater knitting? I know when I made my first sweater, it was kind of, it took me in a whole new direction with my knitting because until then I was making a lot of hats and a lot of shawls in socks, socks, hats, and shawls. Um, And I still really like to make socks and I like to make hats and shawls too. But what I find is that how many hats am I going to (laughs) wear? Like, I mean, they last, it's not like you're just throwing them out at the end of the year. Right. So like year after year, how many hats can I knit and give away? I feel like sweaters though, like I wear them all winter. Like I can have a sweater for every single day you know what I mean? Where a hat, like, it's not like you take it off and you have to put it in the washing machine or something. Like, I don't know. I just felt like when I started knitting garments, I was like, it gave my knitting new purpose. Mm. And I feel like I had lost my mojo maybe for a while before I had found sweater knitting, but I didn't start knitting sweaters because I felt like it was scary and complicated. And it was like a big time investment and money investment versus like a hat where I could just grab one skein and, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal. 
So anyway, I'm curious to know, Misty, you've knit two sweaters. Did you, do you love sweaters? Are you planning on knitting more? Did you have issues? Like, tell me about that, please. And then Lynn says she's knitting her first one now. So Lynn, what pattern are you knitting? What are you, what is it? What are you doing? Is it top down, bottom up? Like, how is it going? How far along are you? I want to know that. Um, Beth, my friend, I haven't um, seen you in a while, but I'm glad you're here watching us. And you said uh, you haven't knit a sweater yet. So how come? What's holding you back, right? Because you're here. So I'm, one, I'm thinking most people who are here and watching us have some interest in possibly making a sweater, right? Um, and we want to encourage you and find out where, you know, where your bottleneck is. How, how come you haven't started yet? Um, and same thing here, uh, Valera, is that how you say your name? You haven't started a sweater yet. So again, what, do you want to make one? Are you like, do you have one in mind? Because I know I had like a sweater in mind, but I had, it was like the sweater I wanted to make, but I was too afraid because I didn't want to screw it up, you know? Um, let's see, Ken, Kendra, Kendra, sorry, it's still early for me, even though it's 1030, I have <laughs> cup of coffee yet um has never knit a sweater but is currently planning her first yay what sweater what what are you planning what yarn are you using is it fingering weight dk weight worsted weight mm -hmm. like because that's important too right oh my god so many people here with the sweater knitting mm -hmm. um marguerite never knit a sweater excellent you're not alone at all um, Lou, yes, quite a few. That's awesome. I love, I love, it's, sweaters are now my absolute favorite thing to knit. Um, several, but always learning new tips. That's where I'm at. That's the stage I'm at in my knitting journey is, I don't know all the things. <laughs> but I love to do it and I'm always looking for those new tips. Um, Jen has made quite a few. Uh, and usually has been happy with them. Great. That's awesome. awesome. That is awesome. Oh, and Jen, sorry. I, I just, um, I noticed the other comment that you made um, about your hands. And I don't know if, if anyone else has had this um, or Cheryl, if you've had this, but when my hands um, started to hurt some years back when I was really getting more into knitting and crocheting, mm -hmm. I started to wear these compression gloves that look like little Michael Jackson gloves that are fingerless and they're like gray heather i have some of those right and sometimes i would even wear them overnight and it really yep. helped so yep. like i'm sleeping i've just got my gloves on and then and then that seemed to do the trick um but you know i'm not a doctor but definitely if you have consistent pain talk to your doctor yes, yes. and it also did not hurt you might be gripping your needles too tight. I know that has happened to me in the past where I'm like, <laughs> like really like concentrating and I'm in there and I'm like, I find I have this like death grip on my needles. So sometimes I have to like loosen it up, shake it out, take a break. Mm -hmm. Right. Because sometimes we get so into it too. Um, Christy says she's been having trouble. Yeah. That's definitely definitely a thing. And it's hard to get help when you get stuck. Like, what do you, what do you do? Like you can, yeah. I don't know, hopefully maybe you have someone, you know, that knits, or maybe you can go to like a yarn shop if you have one, but it's hard. If you get really stuck, what do you do? So. And, that's and then Christy says later, I'm doing a gauge swatch, but still coming out too big. And that's exactly what we were talking about before is mm -hmm. if your gauge swatch is four inches you might need to bite the bullet and do an eight inch gauge swatch um, or like however big you want, let's say the back of the sweater to be um, then, or if you're doing the sleeves top down, the top of the sleeves or something, um, make a gauge swatch that's that big. Uh, and then, you know, Usually, so I know it's a pain, but like, let's say you have to cast on 80 stitches and then you knit for a couple inches. You can usually see, okay, this is going to be like four inches too wide. And so then 
you're at least pulling back. Um, yeah. You know, so kind of like beginning with the end in mind. That makes sense. There's a lot of questions, not questions, but comments about um, about fit. Like Misty said, she really enjoyed it. The one for her daughter came out great, but hers is too short and she has a long torso. We all have different body shapes. And that's why just reading the pattern is so um, not necessarily the most productive thing to do, just following it like line by line all the time. Yeah, yeah. But like, if you're like me, you need somebody to tell you, okay, but then what do I do instead? Because I can understand, okay, I shouldn't do that, but you, you're right. And that's why and I keep this here. <laughs> Yeah. And, and Misty, I wonder um, if you have ever tried to Frankenstein your sweater. So if you would ever pull out the bottom and um, reattach and knit more, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it depends on the pattern. Sometimes it doesn't make sense to do that. But um, when I was first on Etsy, this was before Etsy was really saturated. It was like 2009, 2008. I had a little crop top and it was like a little halter top for sale. And a woman in Los Angeles, of course, Los, An Los Angeles, um, bought it. And then she said, oh, can you make it four inches longer? And I was like, huh, like maybe I can, you know? Fortunately, it was like a chunky weight yarn and, and I could learn how to like pick up the stitches so that it looked invisible and lengthen it. If she had asked me to make it four inches wider in diameter and it, 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 it was just a tube that would have been a problem <laughs> so sometimes yeah. sometimes when it's length we can we can make changes that makes a lot of sense i have not done that but i have heard of friends saying like oh well just just um you know pick up pick out your bind off if it's something that's just stockinette right and and you could try to lengthen it which makes a lot of sense i have not tried that but i've heard Hi, that Welcome. Janet says, Sleeve Island, Janet, you and me, girlfriend. <laughs> so I get done with my yoke or I, I don't, is it always called a yoke, the top? I'm not sure. The top, what, sure. Like whatever it is, sure. right? When I, when I split for the sleeves, I'll knit maybe another inch or so. And then I do my sleeves first. I always stop and do my sleeves because I find when my sleeves are done, I have so much motivation to finish the body. When the body is done, I have no motivation to finish the sleeves. I have many split mm. sleeves. I have many vests. <laughs> yes. I do and cap sleeves. Yeah. Done. Yeah. But if I do the sleeves first, because I feel like right after the yoke, I'm still I'm very motivated. I'm like, it's gorgeous. I love it. I'm, and it, it gives me that little like extra something I need to then do the sleeves, which uh, the other way around, I can't, I'm, I'm terrible. Um, Kathy, get engaged to discern, determine cast on and size and all the things. Yes. 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 Very yeah. cool. and I have a beautiful um, three-step um, uh, equation and uh, downloadable in the course so that you can just, you know, you can, you can have your gauge because you, you need to remember your gauge at different points during the sweater. Um, and so, um, so just knowing like, okay, mine is 14 rows to four inches or like whatever your numbers are, yeah. you know, you can, uh, you can always have those numbers with you. That's amazing. It's like you've thought of everything. Well, uh, <laughs> believe me, like I'm, I'm always learning um, just as you are. I know you're a lifelong learner and so am I. And, you know, I, you and I were just talking about this stream yard uh, set up, right? Like what yeah. we don't know, we, we figure out and we learn. And um, I fully expect uh, the students in this course to, to be teaching me and to be teaching each other. So yeah, it's um, wonderful. But yeah. Uh, let's see. Valera says, started one, but I love knitting socks. Really want to knit one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, a lot of Sleeve Island. Misty says she's been on Sleeve Island. Oh, Sleeve Island really isn't that bad. Yeah. <laughs> just gotta. We can have a reality show, Sleeve Island. <laughs> it's perfect. It's the most boring reality show ever. <laughs> Slugging away at these sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Um, yeah. So, um, 
yeah, I think that's kind of where we're at with the sweaters. Well, thank you guys for sharing kind of where you're at and what your experience has been, because I also think it helps us know that we're not alone because mm -hmm. sometimes we feel like, why can everybody else do this? And I can't do this. At least I feel that way. Like what's wrong with me that I can't figure this out when I see other people posting all these beautiful things sometimes and I can't, you know? Um, and sometimes it's just a matter of, I don't know, learning, learning the things you need to do. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. Once you know, and when, and once you pick up these tricks, I still remember the things that different knitting godmothers have taught me through the years, you know, mm -hmm. and I still use them in every single project. You know, we all have, we all have those people in our lives who have, you know, yeah. who have told us those things. Yeah. And if you're maybe like me, I did not have anybody in my life. Like I didn't learn how to knit from a grandmother or a mm -hmm. parent or an aunt or anyone. Um, I learned to knit because I just really wanted to learn to knit. And I didn't have anyone to act. Like I didn't even understand what needles like I didn't understand what double pointed needles were. I was like, why are they pointing on both sides? I, I took a little, guys, this is embarrassing, but I'm going to tell you anyway, because we're all friends here, right? Um, you know, those little makeup sponges that are like kind of like wedge shaped. Yes. I would like cut them in half and stick them on the back of the double points. And I'm like, well, I'm going to knit. I don't know why these needles are so weird, but I'm just going to knit with them. <laughs> like I didn't understand because no, I had nobody, you would think that's common sense. Maybe I'm a little slow. No, you invented stitch toppers. <laughs> right? <laughs> and then it was like circular needles. Oh my goodness. Why are there different cord sizes and different needle sizes? And there were so many things. Like, I don't know. Sometimes when we don't have somebody in our corner that we can just ask those like really like kind of maybe obvious questions too, but they're not obvious to I us. Right. Yeah that it, it, I don't know, it takes longer and it can be more frustrating when we don't have some help. So totally. Yeah. yeah. And look, one of my main um, parts of the business is these learn to knit kits. Mm -hmm. And so my favorite thing to do is when I get questions as I do all the time uh, on email from people who are just beginning the journey, they'll, they'll ask questions like, why does my knitting curl up when I make something in stockinette stitch? Yeah. What am I doing wrong? Right. And so it's like, oh, I make a video about it. I explain, I send them the video, then they have their question answered, but then everybody else gets to see the video too. Because if, if it's her question, it's everyone's question. Um, yeah. What do I do when I need to pull out a few rows? Help, you know, what, what do I do when my stitches are twisted? all the, all the things. And, um, yeah, I, I'm like the world's slowest learner when it came to knitting, because I didn't have anyone, you know, like you said, like a grandparent or anyone like nearby to show me. Mm -hmm. And I learned way back in the olden days before there was YouTube or before there was anything like that. And try learning from like those illustrations in a book. <laughs> it's, no. I can't do it. So I only, I only knit for two years. I didn't know how to purl. <laughs> Everything I could do with the knit stitch. That's what I did. Everything was in garter. I did learn how to knit in the round so I could make that beautiful stockinette look. Um, I would knit with one little needle and one big needle. So it would at least be some variation. Mm -hmm. I would do drop stitches, but I could not purl. <laughs> That's amazing. Finally, someone said, oh, you need to have the yarn in front of the work to the left. And then you do it this way. And then I was like, oh, and then I purled. That's not that hard. Isn't that the funny thing to like sometimes like say for sweaters, right? Like, yes, there's things that's there's stuff that goes into it, right? To get mm -hmm. a sweater that is going to be beautiful and that you love. Um, but also once you know the things, it's not it's not an impossible feat, right? Yes. Things aren't that yeah. hard to learn. We just need to know them. And we need somebody who can like impart that knowledge on us. Yeah. Um, I, I find it very similar to cooking. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll look at these recipes and I'll think, oh my gosh, like that looks so complicated. And I, I don't cook. Like 
just like I didn't pearl, you know, <laughs> I'm a very basic, basic cook, but I can see that, oh, if you follow the instructions step by step, then eventually you'll get something edible, you know, yeah. with any luck. Sometimes no, <laughs> but you know, the same with sweaters. There are so many steps, you know, um, but honestly, like if you can make a sock that, that looks like magic to the untrained eye, you know, don't, don't we all feel a bit like wizards when we're making socks? Yeah. We could do sweater too. People, socks I think can be more difficult than sweaters in I some so ways. Too. Yeah. 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 And so many variations. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's, it's definitely accessible and it's definitely a way, as you've said, to kind of get the mojo back in your knitting if you've been, um, you know, like on Hat Island or yeah, <laughs> Hawk Island, you know, you can, you can kind of, um, I love the idea of making a sweater wardrobe. Like it's my dream to just like open up a cedar closet someday and just have them filled with these beautiful sweaters. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, there's just, I'm preaching to the choir, but there's just so, something so special about making something that you can then wear. Yes. And wear it like, I mean, socks are great. Don't get me wrong. I love socks, but who's really seeing them most of the time, right? When you put on a sweater, I mean, it's big, right? It's yeah. the first thing that people see and they're like, oh, wow. You know, you get not that like we're out there fishing for compliments, but it feels good when you spend that much time and effort, right? And yeah. somebody like notices like, wow, that's really beautiful. And you're like, huh, thanks. <laughs> the hair flip. Yes, like, I am a wizard. Thank you very much. <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> like, it does feel good. It has that, for me, it gave me a sense of accomplishment. It gave me, like, you know, I have all this yarn and sweaters do use up a, a decent amount. Like, so you also get to use more of your stash if you're a stash person and are feeling a little like, I have a lot of yarn. Like yeah. sweaters are a great way to use up the stash. And then you just yeah. have a beautiful garment at the end. Cardigans. I love cardigans. They're one of my favorite things to knit. Um, they're so versatile. Like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just think sweater knitting is a fabulous. And crocheting. I didn't even know you could crochet sweaters yeah. until not too long ago. Yeah. I mean, I, I made, um, I made a granny square sweater sweater. Cause I've been seeing them all over. Mm -hmm. Instagram. And I'm like, Oh, I want to make one. And it was such a pain, <laughs> but it's really cute. Um, but to, if, as long as you, as long as you have your drape, mm -hmm. so the size of the hook compared to this, to the gauge of the yarn, the thickness of the yarn, then it's not going to be like a stiff coat. <sighs> it can be like a really luscious thing. And crochet is something that, you know, it's not machine made, right? Like right. your, your sweater could maybe possibly like to the untrained eye, people might not know that right. you made it because it's so professional looking. Right. But with a crochet sweater, like, again, people are not going to know that you made it because it's going to look so beautiful. But we know that like it, you're not going to see that. A machine you know, can't replicate it. It can't replicate it. Right. Yeah. So um, I was thinking about cost. Um, because of course this, this course, I saw an ad for a different sweater course today on Facebook. That's $47. And I've actually taken that course and, um, and it's, it's great. And the, the teacher is wonderful. Um, but I thought, well, what's the difference here between a one and done and it's, mm -hmm. and it's all recordings and like a lifetime access with individualized instruction. I think yeah. that's the main difference. Mm -hmm. But then also um, thinking about cost, I thought about the yarn and the cost of the yarn. And we were talking last night about how if you spend $200, which you can easily do on sweater yarn, um, and then you make a sweater that doesn't fit, mm -hmm. then you, you know what I mean? And so um, and the time you spent making it too, like, yeah. you know, you're going to spend at least probably a few weeks, if not longer, depending mm -hmm. on how much time you have to dedicate. So you've got the cost of the, the materials and then the cost of your time as well. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but then I also thought, you know what, for this course, you do not have to buy the yarn that, 
that we recommend. Cause like you talked about stash busting mm -hmm. and um, I was broke for like most of my adult life. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and so I am like very scrappy. And so I loved, and you can make the most gorgeous, gorgeous sweaters using the yarn that you already have in your stash. Mm -hmm. So as long as it's the right thickness, um, and even if you're like, oh, you know, I have to make this out of fingering weight yarn. I don't know why you would do that to yourself, <laughs> so, but, the, but you know, people do it. Um, but like, we can adjust for that, but it's just like, you know, making, making accommodations so that you can get the education that you want. Right. Right. So, um, and if you're in the course, you could probably post in because the course, you have a Facebook group as well. So you have a community yeah. and you can post in there too and ask, like, these are the yarns I'm thinking about. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like how, yeah. you know, what do we think? I mean, I think sometimes getting that input and feedback before we just start and go, ah, that didn't work. Yeah. So <laughs> From people who are all doing the same thing, like you're all doing the same thing. So, which is, I think to me, a little bit different than just posting randomly somewhere yeah. because they're not doing what you're doing. Right. 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 So they're not going to necessarily know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and then also I just want to, I only, I know I only gave the one tip about, um, about creating your sweater using a template sweater or garment. I would say like my number two tip mm -hmm. is, is more about mindset. And that is like, it is conceivable that you will knit another sweater that doesn't work <laughs> in your life, right? This is not the only sweater I've made that doesn't fit me well. Just, just saying I made another two, two <laughs> other beautiful sweaters that, I gorgeous. Love them. Can't yeah. wear them. Yeah. Don't fit. Yeah. And, and it's okay. Like I, I feel like, you know, to get a little Zen on us, it is about the process and we learn something with every garment that we knit. And I would say that the time is not wasted at all. You know, that it's um, like, I, I liken it to being a writer. So as long as you keep writing and keep writing, 80% of it is going to be doo-doo. And then you're going to get that 20% that's real gold. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then you keep going and you keep going. So what a course and what education does is it helps you cut out all the mistakes. So maybe instead of like 80% of the time you're making mistakes, you bring it down to like 25% of the time. <laughs> and you have somebody to help you along the way. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. And I mean, like for me, my issue, so I've had these several sweaters that don't fit, but I haven't just, I hate, I even hate admitting these things, but I, I haven't learned how to do it better. So, so, so when they come out well, like, I mean, I have learned, okay, I know if it says this, like, because now I've done it, but it's not intentional. It's not like super, in, like, I don't start with that knowledge of like, okay, now I know I'm not going to make a sweater that doesn't fit me because I've learned certain things. I'm right. still kind of hoping that it's all going to work out. Yeah. And, and you're putting, you're putting trust in the designer, which is usually completely fine. Yeah. And sometimes it's not, and it's not necessarily the designer's fault. No. Believe me. Uh, it's just, it's, it's impossible nearly given the variation in human bodies to address all the different needs. You exactly. Know? It yeah. is. I mean, we could be the same size, but my arms could be wider than yours. Yeah. I mean, you could have really skinny wrists and somebody yeah. else doesn't. I mean, there's so many little things about our bodies that there's no way a designer can be held to like a level of accountability to make a sweater that's going to be absolutely perfect on every single person. Yeah. And I think that's where we need to be self-aware and we need to take some ownership, right. Of what we're creating. Um, but I know like for me, just the, the learning is a big deal. And it's a big deal also because it's only something, you know, sort of recently that I've realized that it's okay for me to invest in myself Yes, when it's not like for a dire, like, you know, like this has to happen or like the world's going to fall apart. But just because 
I really love knitting and it's a thing that it's the gift that I give to myself, right? I know that sounds yeah. kind of corny, but um, so if you guys know me, you know that I have the Yarnable subscription box. And one thing I get a lot of messages and they, God, they make me so happy every time I get them is that people say like, this is the one thing. This is the one thing I do for myself every month. Yeah. And it's such, it's such a gift to myself. And I think like, yes, that's why, that's why I do this yeah. because everybody deserves to have that one thing that's just for them. It's not for your kids. It's not for your partner. It's not for, you know, your mom that maybe you take care of or whatever it is, right? It's not for your job. It's just for you. And I've only started realizing that like, oh, like I can actually not just have it for myself, but like invest in doing and learning and making it a bigger part of my life. And in that, sorry, I'm getting, I know I'm getting maybe a little woo woo, but I love it. I love it. In that, what I have found is that it makes my life better. Like, it's not also like, it's great to learn and improve a skill. And that's wonderful all by itself. But for me, what I found is even better is like, it actually adds value to my everyday existence. Like the, just the little things that I know if I'm going to go pick something up, like say for knitting and I now, well, better example, I just learned how to crochet better than I had ever been able to do before. And now I'm making something in crochet and I look forward to it instead of, I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to look at the pattern. I'm not going to know what I need to do. I'm going to put it down and I'm going to feel like garbage. You know what I mean? Like yeah. being like, I know I can just go grab my stuff and I know what I'm doing gives me like confidence in myself. Like it does all of these other things. And I just think it's yes. so important. I, it's so important. It, yes. And it's like, um, I was talking to my son's girlfriend. Um, they're both studying the poor things. They're studying in Italy. And so they, they had to take Italian classes and neither one of them is great at languages. Um, I don't think they would mind my saying that. <laughs> English is fine, but Italian is, you know. And, um, and she said, I just felt so overwhelmed. Like I was the worst one in the room and everyone else was doing better than me. And I said, you know, it's painful but I've actually heard that it's good to be the worst in the room at something because that will help you grow. And then she's going to be in rooms where she is not the worst anymore. And then she's going to be in rooms where she's the best at things. And it's, um, you know, being in that beginner mindset or just learning new things in one area of your life, like you said, it gives you confidence in your day to day. And not everybody had a great school experience, but I kind of love taking courses because I love like getting my little notebook out and taking notes and trying things. And this is like, there are no grades, there's no pressure. So it's like kind of the fun, positive aspects of it without any of the, uh, <laughs> yes, yes. And yeah. you know what else when I, so here's another thing. Sometimes, especially like in crafting, I can learn how to do something and I can get through it and do it. And it's, and I'm like, oh, I made this thing and it's really great. But then like two months later, I want to do it again. And I'm like, oh, I don't remember. Like I did it once. Like, yeah. I don't remember. I don't know. I'm not like, I'm not proficient at it yet. And I think the thing about taking a course, like for me, is that it's okay. It doesn't all have to live in my brain forever. Right. Every time I go through it, I pick up a new thing that maybe sticks this time. But yeah. I have it there to do it again and again until I am proficient. And that yeah. also gives me that like some sort of like security blanket, like, okay, yeah. I've done it, but now it's not more endless hours of trying to figure it out the next time I want to do it. Yeah. So yeah. I don't have the energy, like I'm tired, guys. <laughs> I work hard, right? We all do. We have, things, we have all these things. And like sometimes I don't want to spend all that time figuring it out, like, I just want to be able to be like, oh, this is how I do it. Yeah. Right. And have an easy way to get that information. And I know 
when, when I, so I've been taking several courses as well. And when I do, I'm just like, oh, I can just flip open my laptop and get to that spot that I need help with. And off I go. Yes. And I enjoy my crafting time instead of like that. Oh God, it's almost too much mental energy just to think about what I have to do. So I don't even start. Yeah. You know, I was so excited about talking to you today that I really had trouble sleeping. So I was up a lot this morning. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, I thought, oh, I just noticed that my um, computer's not plugged in. Give me one second. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So while Carrie's doing that, um, I'm going to ask some questions, or I'm going to look at some comments and ask some questions. So Marsh Knitting 101, one, I love, I love your username. You said, I think most of my problem is the yarn. So what do you mean by that? What, what, what are, are you having trouble with? Is it um that you're not picking the right yarns for the projects or tell me more and we'll discuss because i, I want to know more about that um and then let's see i thought there was something else i wanted to see maybe it was just also um marsh knitting you said that yours is always too big so yeah um and does that have to do with the yarn or are you thinking maybe that has to do with the yarn mm -hmm. Um, oh, okay. She said she feels like she needs to learn more about the weights. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That's definitely, um, I feel like another one of those things that people think we should just, we should just know, like what are double pointed needles, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. and we just don't know until somebody, it's like an easy thing. Once you, once you do know, it's very like, you're like, oh, or purling, right? You're like, oh, I can <laughs> Right, not it's not that big it's not that big of a deal, but it's just like who how are you going to gain that knowledge, right? It doesn't yeah. just magically come from the sky as much as I would love it if it did. How long did it take you before you had the yarn weights under your fingers? Like it took me it definitely took me several years before I was like, oh, DK. You know, like what's the difference between fingering and sport? You know, and they've got these numbers right? The craft council. Yeah, and, you know, how long, how long before you really got the hang of that? Like, I would think being a dyer, maybe you learned it sooner. Um, I, I probably did learn it sooner because, so I started initially crocheting because I feel like that was, it seemed like an easier entry point. And then I quickly discovered that I wanted to make things that were more, um, that just lent themselves better to knitting. And so I was like, I want to learn to knit. And so I watched a lot of YouTube. That's how I discovered that hand dyed yarn even existed. And I kind of went straight down that rabbit hole. <laughs> so I think before I was even like that great of a knitter, I was probably already like dyeing yarn. Yeah. Um, and so I, I learned a lot, but I'm trying to like think what I used for the longest time. And I want to say it was probably worsted weight. I probably just worked with worsted weight the most. I don't think I used fingering weight until I tried to make socks. Yeah. And that was also <laughs> just a whole nother, a whole nother story for a whole different. <laughs> when we have our sock course, yes. we'll come back and talk about it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. And I think what I didn't know is why I would use one type of yarn and why I would use certain needles with that yarn. Like, and I get questions a lot about, um, okay, well, I want to knit this thing. What, what size needle should I get? And the answer is like, you can knit a fingering weight sweater with size 10 needles. Yeah. It, so yeah. there's not a, I, I feel like it's, I know, I, and maybe I could be wrong because I'm not a proficient crocheter, but I feel like in crochet, it might be a little more like you use the hook size that kind of goes with the yarn. Um, and that might be different in some instances, but with knitting, you can really, like, it's just depending on the gauge you want. Yeah, you can get different fabrics. Yeah. 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 Um, and so that that nuance, I think, is the harder yes. part to to get familiar with. Yeah. 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 Well, shall we tell people how to, uh, if they want to get involved, how to join? Yes, we've been here for almost an hour. So, I know. It's been really nice. Do that. <laughs> and uh, let me know. 
Have you guys looked at the course? Have you guys gone to the website? Carrie, do you have a link that you can put in? Yeah, I'm going to put it right in the comments. Um, I'm, I feel like I should have been more prepared, but I did not prepare the link. Um, because I want to know if you looked at the course yet. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I, uh, I put EDU as if I were... Um... <laughs> Oh no, is that not the right? Is that not the right one? Ignore that. <laughs> Ignore that. Can I remove the comment? I don't know how to do that. Awesome. Um, oh, I think you can delete it. I think you can okay, delete that one. Oh, yeah. Um, All right, I'll do that. So yeah, I want to know if you've gone to the if you've gone to the website, because I know I've sent out a few emails about it because honestly, I am pretty passionate about it. And I think mostly because of what I already talked about with how I feel like the learning and the investing in yourself has just become such a big part of my life. And it's been really life changing for me. And so I don't know, I feel like that that's a gift that everybody sort of deserves to have. So I know I've been sending out a lot of emails because of that. But I want to know if you've checked it out at all, or if you don't even know what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you just like, I don't know, I'm just here for the live, <laughs> which is fine. I do want to welcome two of your members, Amanda and Lynette. They're going Yay. to be joining us. Yeah. So I'm very that's excited about amazing. that. Amazing. Yeah. Yes. That's awesome. So yeah, let's talk about it. Let's talk about how they can get in, when Wait. the window, the doors, the windows, yes. <laughs> that's all the things. So we, we only have a few days left. Um, mm -hmm. We're closing the doors at midnight on Friday. Okay. So, um, you know, I really wanted to be able to just get like our core group of members started Mm -hmm. Um, in a way, this is a beta group in that it's our first time doing it. So it's going to be very flexible and adapting to our students' needs. Mm -hmm. Um, like I said, we have like a number of students who are making extra large sweaters. So we're going to be, um, spending a lot of time talking about how to fit, um, and how to work backwards from a template. Like I talked about, mm -hmm. um, so once you sign up, you have instant access to all the modules um, and those are all up now. So you could, um, well, <laughs> you wouldn't quite know exactly what to do, but you could certainly get started, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and then we're gonna have a kickoff meeting on Thursday the 28th and that's a Zoom call. And so everyone will get their private link and um, you don't have to show up on video if you're not comfortable, but you know, we're all very friendly. So we'll, we'll meet each other. We'll have our kickoff party and we're going to do our gauge swatches. Then twice a month in April, twice a month in May. So mm -hmm. two evenings, although my one gal in Arizona, it's going to be like 5 PM, but um, two evenings in April and in May, we're going to spend one night um, on each module. Okay. So, um, so like module two, two will be the one night and then that's like the sleeves and then module three will be the, you know, the front and the pockets and the buttonholes or that kind of thing. So you have two weeks in between each meeting to get done what you can get done. And like you said, there's no behind, but if you can at least get started on the different things, then you can bring up any questions that you have. And then you start to build up your own pattern. So by the end of, so we've got April and May, by the end of May, I'll be able to present you in our June finale party with your like Cheryl's sweater pattern. Oh, right. Where it says like cast on this many stitches, this is what you did. And then you're like, oh, I needed to change this. So everything will be all like printed out and then you could replicate that. That's amazing. Cool, right? That is very cool. You're so creative. I love that about you. You think of like all these things. Thank you. Well, yeah. takes one to know one. <laughs> <laughs> so what else do you get? Um, you get a 25% discount on the yarn if you choose to buy the yarn with us. This, um, I'm just going to order it from the wholesaler and I just give you 25% right off the top. Um, if you pay in full, so there are three payment options. One is to just pay once, cry once, and then have it be over with. Right, rip the right. band-aid off, right? Just rip off the band-aid. Yeah. There's also a six-month payment plan, and there's a 12-month payment plan. Which is absolutely amazing, by the way. I just want to say that 
I mean, I know some courses have done that, but whenever I see that, I just think what a great way to make it affordable for yeah. anyone who really wants to be involved, but just doesn't have that to put all up right at the beginning. You know, it's such yeah. a great, great way to be able to get in and get the entire experience and oh, yeah. the things and all of the updates and all of the, like the new crochet course and everything, but you get to dole it out in much more manageable. Like, yeah. And you can, and you can budget, you know, and again, for most of my adult life, I would not have been able to afford to pay in full for this course. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so, but if you do choose to pay in full, then we're giving you a bonus sweater bundle. And so that's all of the needles that are required and they're Addy turbos. So they're, you know, really good quality needles, circular needles for your project. Um, and then uh, Verna, who, like I said, is doing the crochet sweater course in the fall, she has put together this gorgeous goodie packet. So it's um, a project bag and a notebook and tape measures and stitch markers, stitch stoppers, the whole thing. That's amazing. Um, and so that's our gift to you uh, when you join and, and pay in full. Now, if you, um, if you do the payment plan, you still get access to the whole thing. We're not dripping anything out. You get access to the whole thing. And um, you also, um, we also have a money back guarantee. So we're here to serve you. If you're not getting what you need out of this course, we're gonna talk about it. And you know, you can get your money back. I, you are putting your trust in me, just like I'm putting my trust in my students, you know? So um, that's yeah. just, I find that's like the best karmic way to operate. <laughs> Yeah. And it lets you maybe take a chance on something that doesn't feel like, oh my God, like, what if I hate it? What right. if I, what if this, you know, what if this Carrie chick is, doesn't know what she's talking about? You know what, what I mean? Yeah. Like, or know. if life is lifing, I mean, you yeah. know, if things happen and, and, you know, the nice thing is that you do have lifetime access. So if um, God forbid something happens and you, you need to take a break for a little while, you know, we're going to have a crochet course again in the fall. I love this so much that I, like I said, I want to do a new sweater next spring. You don't have to pay for the course again. You've already paid for it. So you get to do the next sweater course if you choose. Yeah. Um, so I really see this as something that's like only going to get better <laughs> and you have the opportunity to get in at the beginning. Well, and let's face it, you can't do all of these things at the same time. Anyway, you can't, you know, you can only really work on and learn what you're teaching. So I think that adding on one, it's very different than a lot of things that I've seen, because it's not just uh, one and done, you're getting this thing. And then, you know, see you later, that's the end of it. Yeah. You're adding this additional value and this additional content and this additional ability to learn over time. So I don't know. I just feel like that's so different than a lot of the things I've seen where you start it, you kind of go through a couple of weeks and then, you know, and then it's done and you, and then it's over. And then if you want yeah. the next thing, you have to buy it again. You have to buy right. the crochet course. You have to buy, right. you know. Um, and so I really love that you're doing that and that you're not gatekeeping the material. So no. you can pay monthly if you need to mm -hmm. over a year, which is a long time. Yeah. You know, it gives you quite a runway. Um, yeah. But you can, but you still have the ability to, to do all the you know activities all the learning all the community be on the live chats that you're going to do like that's amazing yeah it Thank really you. is i mean it's like my favorite thing in the world to do so i i feel very lucky yeah. so um, christy i i'm gonna add the link um i did add it before but let me do it again so it's create dot the spinning hand dot com slash h y and the website when you go to it if you scroll down it shows you all the modules and it gives you like an overview of everything that's going to be covered i mean honestly buttonholes like that <laughs> you don't even mean that's you're you're getting in my opinion things that go beyond just even the basics like you're not just i'm taking this and i'm gonna learn how to knit this one sweater and i'll have this one right thing done you're getting your whole recipe of your whole yes. like, for your own body you're getting these additional skills that you can use in other projects like yes. making a pocket 
I don't know how to make a, I've never made a pocket in my life. Yeah. Like, you can put pockets on all kinds of things. Like, I you know. know. <laughs> <laughs> like there's all kinds of things that I feel like you're giving more than just, oh, you know, you're going to make this one sweater with us. And it, it, like, it's not just a glorified knit along. It's not a, exactly. It's, it's right? not just a knit along and nothing would make me happier. So here's like my secret wish mm -hmm. is that, um, my students will start to design their own sweaters and start to teach future uh, KCU oh, courses. Man. Would that be amazing? That would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. that's what I want. I want for the students to like surpass the master. Right? <laughs> I love that. I love I'm an that. intermediate. I'm not the master, but someday. I love um, that also, like, it just goes to show like how, um, I don't know, like how open you are too. Like, you know what I mean? Like you're, you, it shows how you really are there for everybody. And that, like I said at the beginning, that's kind of something that I've just always loved about you. Like you're a very selfless person. You're very you. like, I don't know, just like kind and how can I help? And you guys don't know, but like behind the scenes that Carrie helped me set up this video. She helped me like with the link. I'm like, I don't know how to do certain fancy things. And she's like, I will help you. She's just, <laughs> And I was like, okay, like she wasn't like, oh, you could Google that or, oh, <laughs> you, could go, um, you know, there's a help doc for that. Just search for it. Like oh she, she like made me a little like walkthrough, like, because that's who she is. <laughs> Not everybody is like that. And I think because you are, you might mm -hmm. think like, oh, people are just this way, but they're not like, I feel like, we you know, they're not, yeah. you give extra, you know, you Thank like, you. you like step up and, and I, you know, I, I know. will say like, I've, um, I've had a lot of this, it's going to sound so crazy, but like, I've had a lot of pain in my life. And mm -hmm. so I feel like I went through that so that I can make other people's lives better. Yeah. I understand that. Okay. You know, like, I feel like there's gotta be a reason. So we like galvanize this mm -hmm. and that's something I was going to say before I plugged in my computer was so much of our lives, our day-to-day -day lives can be painful and can be stressful. Not always. And I know we have so many blessings, so many privileges. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that I'm like sitting pretty compared to 98% of people who have ever lived. <sighs> that being said, knitting like is still like my salvation. And like, it's just... I'm the luckiest person in the world to get to teach a course that that is like this beautiful thing and share it with other people. So even if even if the, you know, nine or 10 students who take this course are the only students I ever have, it's going to be the coolest experience. Yes, yeah. it really will. And I say the same thing like about Yarnable. I yeah. just I feel so grateful that I get to be a part of other people's joy and other people's experience. Like it, I don't know, it's like it feels like something bigger than myself because I get to give it to somebody else, you know, and yes. I get to hear like what it did for them and what they made with it and how happy that made them and how maybe they shared that experience with one of their kids or like whatever it is. I just feel so grateful that I get to do that. And I feel like that's kind of what I'm hearing from you. It's like, you know, yeah. just the opportunity to be able to teach anybody. Right. It's like, you know, so before you um, struck out on your own with hypnotic yarn, um, did you work in, in sales in like a corporate setting? Yes. Yep. Yep. And I was, I was also in, um, a publishing house. I started out as an admin assistant and I worked my way through over 10 years to different roles mm -hmm. and, um, it's very different. <laughs> so like when you've had that experience of working for the man, mm -hmm. you know, or the woman, <laughs> it's like. That's why I just, I feel so lucky. Yeah, so. it is it is a very, very different. You are correct. <laughs> and yeah, I feel so lucky every day that I get to do what I do and that I get to talk to like all of these great, amazing people and be part of their knitting journey. And like for you with the teaching, like they can take that knowledge and they can, like I said, I didn't have anybody, right? I didn't have... Right. A, like a role model in my life that passed this skill down to me. And I just think what an amazing gift to give to people that they can then pass down also yeah. to the people. To they their babies. Yeah. And it's they're, and they're, and they're young friends. I mean, I, I have so much hope for this generation coming up. I mean, my son is 21. I have three stepsons. The youngest is 17. And, uh, these are amazing, amazing young people. And, uh, 
Yeah. And they're really interested. You know, they're really interested in, I have a feeling most of the people um, on this call, since you're not at school, <laughs> you know, a little older, but, um, you know, the young people that I meet, they would love to learn to crochet and knit. Yeah. So we've got to spread the good. good yeah. Tattoo. Like the good, yeah. All Ooh. the good making of vibes. So I guess before we kind of let you guys go and we stop holding you hostage with our live video, does anybody have any questions? Do you have any questions about the course or anything that you just have like a burning question about knitting sweaters in general that we didn't cover? Please feel free to pop it in. We'll give a couple of minutes and see if there's anything that um, Carrie can answer for you about the course or that we can talk about in general for sweating sweater knitting before we um before we sign off. But I am so grateful that you guys came and hung out with us today. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really do love it. I love I could chat, I could chat about knitting and yarn and now <laughs> crochet pretty indefinitely. So um I will say do you, right. mind, um, do you mind writing the link? Um, Sheila says that the website's not showing up. Okay. And I wonder maybe if you write the comment, it'll show up. Uh, let me try. Bear with me. Let's see. You still see me? Yeah. Okay. I'm just grabbing. I'm going to try to grab the link real quick. Um, so it's create.thespinninghand.com slash hy oh okay which stands for hypnotic yarn okay let me do that hold on hold on you guys i am not the techiest okay so let's see create dot let me make sure i type it right and com slash hy create dot the spinning hand dot com slash hy okay it is a thinking um if for whatever reason you are interested and the link is not working and you just it can't you can't get there shoot me an email um at hello at hypnotic yarn.com and i will email the link directly to you so, so the, there's no www oh so how do you get there then I don't know. Um, Just create. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's fine. Let me try it again. You guys, thank you for bearing with us. <laughs> Slash H Y. I mean, do I need to put like the HTTP stuff in front or no? No. No. So being married to an IT guy, this is how I learned this. It's either HTTPS dot slash slash or just create dot this ah, yeah. okay. well hopefully hopefully <laughs> that works you may need to copy and paste it into your browser like it might not if it doesn't work as a link try copying and pasting it into your browser or like i said shoot me an email um and i am happy to uh, send you the link directly because you know sometimes sometimes that's just the best <laughs> checking <laughs> <laughs> so um I forget. I was saying something. What was I going to say? We're talking about making. We're talking about new adventures. Um, I don't remember how I was going to tie this in, but I was going to say that I am, I'm currently crocheting a little blanket because I recently found out that I'm going to be a grandma. Oh, congratulations. So, yeah, so I got her made that announcement last month. So I think everybody is now aware and I can like freely speak on it but i also want to knit all the baby sweaters <laughs> so i need to figure out that as well um so yeah i don't know very exciting baby watch so right so exciting. do we know if it's going to be a boy or girl it's gonna be a girl oh it's gonna be a girl and they picked the name alice i love that name isn't it like just a, like a sweet, they wanted something that felt a little more like classic and maybe a little more of like, I know Alice to me doesn't sound vintage, but to them, you know, because there's an age gap to them, it feels a little more vintage. Yeah. Um, so 
I thought it's such a sweet name. My husband's already started calling the baby Alley Cat. So that's the new nickname. He has this, um, they told us on his birthday. So they gave him a t-shirt that says something about like, who has two thumbs and is going to be a grandpa or something. Oh. And he wears the shirt all the time. He's always like going out and he's got his little grandpa shirt on. I'm like, oh, that's so, so great. Cute. So cute. <laughs> So, okay. Well, I assume I haven't seen any new questions pop in. Again, if you need help getting to the link or anything, or if you think of any questions, please feel free to reach out. Is there a contact page on your site, Carrie, too? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So you can reach out to me and I can get it over to Carrie. Or if you go to her site, reach out to her through the contact page. I'm sure she's going to be keeping a close eye on that and we'll and we'll answer any questions that you might have um, if you're thinking about signing up, but you know, are on the fence and need some additional information, we're happy to help. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time. Uh, yes. I know Cheryl and I had a lot to catch up on. So it, it feel like it, it feels like it flew by. So I really yes. appreciate it. I know. Thank you. And have a wonderful rest of your day and all the making. And um, yeah, I guess that's it. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye, you guys.